Hello, and thank you for joining us to this series of talks, A New Life with Rav Lightman. Hello, Rav Lightman. Hello. Hello, Nitsa Mazoz. Hello. And uh, we're going to be uh, learning from the Rav Lightman how, about how to reach a new life, a healthier life uh, in this series of talks. Uh, we've been doing that, and, and we'd like to dedicate this specific talk to the matter of uh, a healthy lifestyle and preventive medicine. We know that to deal with uh, a problem once it's already appeared is not as wise, and it's better to prevent it if we can, and this is what we'd like to focus on in this uh, talk today. So, Nitsa, please, if you could open our discussion. So first of all, it's true that our world has developed very much and also modern medicine has developed very much, but also we've s we see that the uh, number of illnesses has not decreased and also there's a, a lot of chronic illnesses that uh, medicine doesn't really have the solution to. And so a lot of, uh, we see that what has evolved over the previous years is, is preventive medicine in order to help us live a, a more comfortable, easier life. And it's being uh, pushed quite a lot here in Israel, also the World Health Organization. It's 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 doing that in three levels. First of all, in order to uh, help us uh, become more distanced from from possible threats, for example, uh, give vaccinations to people and to decrease the uh, threat of illnesses. The second level is the ability to. Uh, to diagnose and treat a, an illness that it's it's beginning and the third one is already to treat an illness once it's been diagnosed so first of all we'd like to to ask generally is there a recipe for a healthy life what is preventive medicine in your approach look uh, maybe i seem skeptical or cynical cynical but we just need to start at the at the foundation, at the basis of things. And our foundation is ego. And if something happens, then it's worthwhile for someone that it should happen. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. And therefore, the medicine was developed. And it, and it was developed in a non-preventive way because in the beginning, if, if, excuse me, if we look at the previous generations from a 1,000 or 2,000 years ago, then of course, then we saw preventive medicine because it was very important to keep a person healthy because he w if he wasn't healthy, he'd be hungry. He, he wouldn't be able to, s to protect himself. He would risk the, his family's life. How many unhealthy people risk the village or the town or the country, the state? So then and there, it was very important to make sure that everyone will be healthy. And then uh, they developed uh, as, as many uh, ways as possible to keep or prevent a person from being ill with all the, with, with, with their very uh, limited ability, they, they yearned for that. Until we reached the state in which money, money, money was all that mattered. And then medicine became a business. And then it's worthwhile for people to be sick. And then there's uh, there isn't prevented preventive medicine as we had before in our grandmother's days. It's the opposite. The doctor uh, makes a more profit uh, if if there he has more patients, and a surgeon makes more money if he if he performs more surgeries and so on, operations. And the Ministry of Health receives more money in accordance to the number of sick people in the country and so on and so forth. So we have as many doctors as there are patients. And so this business grew and grew and grew and, and the person became more and more ill. Where are their new illnesses from? It's because we do not, A, practice preventive medicine. And from there, and also from from maybe us finding illnesses where they aren't actual illnesses also. Preventive medicine it includes our entire environment, where a person lives, where he breathes, how he moves, what conditions does he work under, 
and what does he eat and how does he sleep and his daily routine his relationships with others everything that can be a cause to a possible future illness this must all be the field of preventive medicine this is what the true Ministry of Health needs to put his hand on and say, this is right, this is wrong, this is how it should be and this is how it shouldn't be. I am the one who determines here if we are truly talking about concern for the health of, of people. And we don't see that. It happens for the f happened for the first time with smoking. Somehow with smoking it's now happening. And it's really pra worthy of praise, even though here is, there's also all kinds of calculations and interest. But actually, if preventive medicine was developed as a technology of life, then of course we wouldn't see as many problems, as many illnesses. We wouldn't need to develop as many uh, uh, technologies and medicines and, and medicines of course our approach is disrespective it's 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 uh, uncaring so that's what that's what's happening so the Ministry of Health needs to change its approach from healing those who are ill to taking making sure that there won't be anybody sick or ill. Uh, the problem is that there is the egoistic interest here where they make a lot of money off of medicines and 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 surgeries and operations and, and problems. So it's a very big business. Where you So maybe if we can we can give a person who's listening to us now some tools so he won't have to wait until the system changes i want to tell you that until you treat the general ego of humanity you won't change the the foundation of the approach to a person's health okay that's clear the humanity and and the society and the system i understand but let's go from that to uh, the individual there are things that the individual and all these parameters that you uh, you specified there are some things that he can uh, the, a person can do um in his life to to live more wisely you said he can see where he works what how does he live how does he breathe how are his relations with others and i didn't have time to write it all down and all kinds of such things so i think our talk will be more fruitful if we talk on the part of the individual and not humanity or the system let's put it this way if we wait for the system to change maybe i, I won't be alive anymore so this is a little uh big for me so maybe the system will change if we each change our approach if you can change the individual's approach and direct him in the in, in the right direction of preventive medicine and, and, and a healthy lifestyle and, and then more and more individuals will also make the system change but if I'm now gonna sit on my couch and wait for the egoistic system to change then I think that will be too late for me so Nitsa how can we advance from here so first of all, you described, on the part of the individual, you described his environment as a very significant uh, factor, which in, it includes everything, where we live, the air that we breathe, everything. If I was born healthy, why do I later become ill? This is a question, right? Yeah, this is a good question. So what is it, what is, why does it happen? Check your environment, what else? Why should something happen wrong? There are illnesses that we don't understand where they come from. They still don't know these things. This is something that develops, say, even though a person is born healthy, but God forbid, at some point in life, there's a trigger, as they say, and some illness uh, arises. It can be hereditary, genetic, and so on. This happens, okay. It's not 
that there are such, so many problems. I have students who are doctors, and when I talk to them about medicine, then one will say, if a person takes up to 10 pills a day, that's normal. And the other says, with us, it's already accepted to take 15 pills. It depends on, on the healthcare system they're part of. A person takes up to 15 pills a day, and that's called normal. Well, what, what's normal about it? Who is it normal for? If I am uh, a company that makes these medicines, then it's normal for me. If I'm the one who who has the uh, health uh, ministry, then of course it's normal for me. But if I'm a person, well, then why is it normal for me? If I look at a person, I need to give him what he needs a day, the, the number of calories, meat, milk, etc. W it doesn't say, it's not written anywhere that I need to add any chemical substance to, to his food. What, what's normal about it? If I want to balance a person, even if they use the right kind of medicines in order to balance all kinds of deviations in the body, where are those deviations coming from? Let's go to the causes and, and disconnect th those just like in, in ancient times where a doctor was paid as long as a person was healthy. And when he was ill, he wasn't paid. This is what was also in China. The doctor would come to each family, to every home, and, and, and at every door there was a coin. If there was a coin, he'd take it and move onwards. At the moment there was no coin, it was a sign that there's somebody sick inside and he has to go inside. And and this is how he'd know and how he'd treat people. And until a person is sick, it, you said the very nice sentence before. You said, if, uh, why, if I was born healthy, why would I have any illness afterwards? And there were just a, a few days in life that you felt healthy. Not that I felt healthy. I had a few months uh, in my life that I lived in nature, next to a beach. I lived in a field, and, and over the the hill there was a beach. I had a nice uh, garden. It was just n a natural environment. I lived like that for a few months. And when I came back to Israel, then I remember that people looked at me and said, you look very healthy. Now, I, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't feel healthy or not healthy. You received it from nature. Yes. Now, I can't live this way today, unfortunately. But since then, I have a kind of reference point. And this is why I like this sentence a lot. If I was born healthy, I shouldn't be ill. You, you, this picture arose in me when you said that because there is such a situation there is such an option that a person will be nourished by his environment on all levels and it was mood and and uh, maybe swimming in the sea and 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 walking in the air in the open air and I when I'm thinking about it when I think about what it's like to live healthy there was such a variation of things there that it's like with a fetus in the womb, nature enveloped me that way. And then I received all of these nourishments without needing to think about it or do anything artificial. I was naturally healthy. Of course, I don't have that today. But today, I would like to know, what do you think I can do, things I'm able to do, in, to, in order to have a healthier lifestyle on all levels? It can be from nutrition to sports to relationships. It doesn't matter to me on what level. I want the result of being healthy. And if we look at Israel, it's a pretty pressureful country. But I talked to people who live in Australia, my friends, and they said that today, in order to actively do something to be healthy, is something that takes the maximal attention in a person's life. In Australia, if you're not in a gym and, and there three times a week, you must be a homeless person. And if you don't take care of your nutrition, then you're completely uh, a person of no awareness and, and lack of culture. It's the same in the United States, maybe. But in, in Israel, I think awareness is a bit less, but it's also growing gradually. You see uh, supermarkets that are natural, nature markets. So it's arriving gradually. 
And what I want to say that in our modern lifestyles, out of this lack, out of the Ill illness on all levels of, of life, from the emotional to the physical level, people are feeling that we need to get up and do something in order to be healthy so that it's not wise to wait for the body to rot. We need to do things actively in order to be healthier. And I'd like to hear from you, how do you see this? In the most open, wide, deep, rich way, whatever you want, tell me. Give me a basket of maybe a number of tools on all levels of life which you think I need to make sure that I have in order to be a healthy person on all levels. First of all, it's the highest system, which is the system of relationships, because this influences everything. They also say that the most important thing is uh, your nerves. Uh, I knew you were going to say this. I, knew, I know this on every, each and every one of my organs. So the most important is to balance one's relationship with the environment. What do you mean to balance? To balance is not to be, to suffer from pressure, from fears, anxieties, lack of confidence, all kinds of negative feelings. That's first of all. We need to put that in, in preventive medicine, of course. Just like they want me to get rid of my cigarettes. Give me such conditions to, to, so that I'll be able to lose my pressures, the stresses in my life, and the factors that bring me stress, even though I don't want them, I don't belong to them. Why not prohibit the honking in the road, on the road? We can think of a thousand and one things that we, we need to, to prevent. We see that it works. Why don't they take care of it? But the world is a jungle. How will you be calm? Mister, it all depends on the culture and education which we want to bring through the media to each and every citizen. It's not a problem. If we determine lawfully through the government and the Ministry of, of Communications belongs to the government and it's able to pass these laws in the government and will start uh, through the media to, to... You see that it happens on TV all the time. You see all these nutrition uh, programs and, and uh, exercise programs. So doctors need to pass this such a law where we will... Let's, let's locate the factors that are bringing people excess stress. What, for example? Uh, unnecessary noise and air pollution. Let's check those vehicles. Let's stop all the, the, the amounts of vehicles that are inside the cities and develop better uh, maybe roads for, for bicycles, paths for bicycles, or, or, or even electrical small uh, um, vehicles, personal vehicles. So also with our uh, relationships, th th our relationships at work, exercises or workshops at work, or even exercises, uh, physical exercise at work or something. Let's begin not just to show uh, horror films on TV to people. Let's show them things that are happy, things that are good, Let's start doing exercises that make you happy during work. What do you mean? Oh, well, you know, to teach a person how to smile, how to laugh. At work? Yes, yes, yes. Let's say 10 minutes of laughter. What for? So that you'll laugh. I'll put uh, on the speaker in the factory laughter. Somebody laughing. And you, after five seconds of hearing that, also begin to laugh. And then you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Afterwards, let's measure your blood pressure and your pulse. And see how healthy you become by that. Why does laughter make you healthy? 
because it releases your tension. That's it. They also say it makes you fatter. That's a different problem. It brings calories, it's true. It, it nourishes you. Okay, so now, this all belongs to preventing problems. I don't know, culture, or education, in schools, with children. A person comes home, what does he see of his kids? What do the kids see at school? What does the, the mother see from them? It's, it's all so pressureful. There are a lot of factors of stress in our lives, and this all needs to be balanced. If you want to be healthy, you have to neutralize all of these. You have to organize them. If I see kids, what way they, they are at schools, the wars they go through, how they come home, and then they can't get along, they want to kill each other. If what programs they watch on TV or in the internet. It's, for me, this is all sources of concern. Uh, it's even, even to, they even bring bring a person to erupt to 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 choose violence. I can't see the, this life anymore. I, uh, I don't know how to shut myself off from all of this. How can I protect myself from this? This is the world. I can't. What am I going to go in my room? Lock myself in my room? Maybe g go into television or newspaper or internet or or maybe get some hobby with my friends, go to some bar or something in order to get rid of all, I, I'm, I'm tired of seeing everything. What is there in this that we need, if we're talking about preventing problems, we need to neutralize all of, it, of the sources of these problems. Okay, you just talked about maybe doing 10 minutes of laughter at work. Why do you say that this is, uh, this is strange? It's, it's natural and it works. No, I'm saying, do workshops, workshops, workshops of, of how to relate well, kindly, and with all kinds of things. We don't, we don't have a lack of these things. We can, we can teach them how to do it. Between workers, colleagues, yes, of course, and if they don't have good relations, we will do it through workshops by giving them exercises and, and, and it's not a problem. A person is, is only a, a machine, an egoistic machine. So what? We'll begin to show a person how much these things are harmful to him. What's harmful? To be in bad relationships. How much it's worthwhile, how much he'll he'll earn profit if he, he creates these good relationships. It's all a matter of game and habits. A, a, a habit becomes a second nature. Okay, it's also for the benefit of, of the of the manager. Okay, so the f the first level is first of all the nerves. This is the highest uh, degree, right? First of all, you need to treat the nerves. And what what's beneath it? Beneath it is all kinds of factors that influence our f our nerves, which is noise. It's uh, it's all the 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 intensity of of the traffic, the problems with reaching work, with the stress at the beginning of the day. We need to to give a solution to each and everything. A solution to each and everything. How? Again, like I said. Today, I, I drove here on the road and I saw thousands of cars. Each of them was only, w w had only one person inside. We have so much pollution from that and so many problems because of that. I just saw, saw just like with the cigarettes, I, th I think that just like with cigarettes, where they are limited forcefully They make it 
cost five or ten times as much as it needs to cost, I would also limit the number of cars. I won't I won't let people who drive cars to go in the city and, and have only public transportation inside a city. Or have each person have their own private uh, bicycle or a small motorcycle. Okay, so that's uh, air pollution. Yeah, also noise in accordance to that. What else? Food at workplaces, around workplaces, coffee places, I would I would uh, make them only serve the, the right kinds of food. Not something that would later make uh, give people problems over time like fast food. Not some sandwiches with ham and, and all kinds of things like that. Sausages. The white bread with ham. All those bur burger ranches, McDonald's. Okay, that was food. Pollution, food. And, and work relationships between people. a little less uh, traffic by prohibiting cars to come into the city. What about exercise? I would have people exercise during work everywhere. Yeah. But also I'm telling you, if you limit the traffic, already you have people walk to, to their jobs and there is no better uh, exercise than walking. Why? Because it's the most natural for the body. You don't need to carry tons of, of, of iron in order to be healthy. That's not healthy. Healthy is to be in movement. Healthy is to move, not more. By not allowing vehicles into the city, I'd solve the problem. What about swimming? Well, swimming is good for some people, not for others. It's not simple. There's some people who can, some who can't, some who are shy. I have a problem with my ear, for example, so I can't, and so on. These are uh, ar artificial things. According to a person's nature, it's either to sit or walk. So, well, thank God we, 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 ha we sit enough. But to walk, this is the, the sport, which is good for everyone for everyone, even the oldest and most ill people, it's good for everyone. I don't see anything else that we need to add. By beginning to walk, you begin to feel that maybe you should do some stretches, but that's because you've walked. And you begin to feel that you need, the body needs just a little additional thing. How does the body feel? The body feels what it lacks. But sometimes there's a feeling, maybe the body feels it, but I am not sensitive towards my body. I, the body signals things to me, but I don't perceive them. Well, you'll understand these signals, and even if you don't, then you don't need to. It must be that you don't need to. And you didn't need, don't need a lot, just two kilometers a day. If a person walks at a good pace, more or less, uh, then it's, that's enough. For men, it's more of a problem. Cause a woman walks around the, ha the home and, and does all kinds of things, bend, bends over to take something, and, and sh she's uh, she has enough movement, more or less, relatively speaking. And, and men are lazy. Well, they, they, they play with the remote control or with the keyboard. Right. And therefore, this is preventive exercise. What else? Well, I think we've, we've spoken about food, about noise, about work relations, about movement. It's enough. You'll see that you'll uh, need to close the Ministry of Health. 
Well, while you were speaking, I thought about how simple and natural the things you're saying are. And we've developed so much. We've developed things we can make m m money out of, not how to prevent anything, how to make money off of all the problems that we ourselves make, create, and how by bringing all kinds of solutions, how we can make even money off of the solutions for these solutions. So we put ourselves into pressure and then we need to go to the gym. Our nature is this way. Well, when you were talking about walking, I thought about the trend that it's become. Gyms and diets, that's not good. We see how in, in cultures until today, they didn't have such uh, muscle men. No, but it's nice. It, it looks good. Yesterday I was at a wedding and they said, oh, you have a, a little balcony. A few people told me. I said, I, it's probably time for me. They said that about you? Yeah, look at me, I'm so thin. Just uh, and, and they thought that I have a little belly. But why am I saying this? Because a gym and so on, it's a huge industry that's probably making billions. But there are values behind it. It's for example, you need the body to be fit, to be nice, to look good. It, these are values of, of beauty. It's all be because of the media and no more. If you ask men what they're doing it for, I want women to look at me this way. And women don't look at that. A woman, by her nature, she values a man not according to how many muscles he has or uh, additional kilos of flesh. And men, they do look at it. So women go to the gym. Men look at women? No, not not at how thin, but they, they, it's not. They don't. It's not the gym that uh, that does it. The gym makes the women more rubbery. What for? No, I'm telling you, this is not what makes a woman beautiful. Okay, that that's what I wanted to say. We're talking about health and and health style. So let's talk about beauty a little bit. Healthy. There's a kind of parallel between them. We were talked by the media, I'm telling you. Naturally, this is wrong. What's wrong? The way, the glasses through which we are looking at now, the ones we're forced to look through now to see men, men the way they look at women and the way women look at men and women at women and men at men. It's not the, the, the healthy, natural standards. No. I'm telling you. It's it's a social con uh, agreement here. Yeah, it's the society is being used just like it's being used with fashion, where you want to sell something new. So each time you make a new fashion, right? I went to uh, uh, an eyeglass store the, a week ago, and I said I want this exact same glasses. I've been coming here year after year, and I want the same kind. And they said, well, you're ancient. We haven't been making these f for so long. Look on the in look in the internet. They don't have such glasses. I said, why not? But they're great. I have them for a long time. And they said, no, no, today it's not fashionable. It's like you tell me you want some old type of jeans. So of course there is the, the matter of, of societal agreement and business and so on. But I want to talk about beauty because it's an important subject. Isn't uh, healthy beautiful? What do you mean healthy? What is beautiful? What, what do you think beautiful is? Let's put healthy as beautiful aside. What is beautiful? What is truly beautiful? There is a value of beauty in nature, isn't there? External beauty, you mean? Well, each one has his own. Each one has his own. I have a Chinese friend, a student. So when he looks at uh, at my daughter, who has such big eyes, he said it maybe if they were a little narrower, it would be nicer. He can't take such big eyes. It seems like they're going to jump out at him. Beauty is something very personal. Why are there beautiful people and be people who are not beautiful? Does it have anything to do with their health, something with their lifestyle? Today there are industries. Why are we talking about now? Because there are li healthy lifestyle industries. People invest money, energies, time to be healthy and beautiful. 
Because we are egoists and we value a person according to his external form, as much as we see, we think it's nice according to the standards that we have, and not according to his internal value. Because we don't see, we don't, we don't see the internality of a person. Now, if you talk about beauty in general, then each species and, and each of the nations of the seventy nations in the world has, from its nature, from his spiritual root, he has this, the, his own beauty standard. The Rashimot, the Sfirot inside the soul are organized in such a way that this, for me, is called beautiful. This, as as a as a female or male, is is considered beautiful. Can I be beautiful? Can any person be beautiful? Ex externally, Ex in externality, each we don't see the person. Again, I'm telling you, I see you through glasses which were given to me through the media, by the media, by the environment, all kinds of people around me. And I look at you through these glasses. I don't see you. I don't know what you look like. And I don't even know what I would like to see. This is how broken we all are. But at least, let's say, forget about these things are deep and if we talk about them, we won't treat this. So let's at least get rid of this problem that if I'm all all blown up, then that's considered beautiful. Let's talk about being healthy. That's something else. These people who, who blow, the, who, who make their muscles so big, they don't live so long. Do you think sport, uh, athletes live very long? No. Their heart is, is, is weak and they get start begin having problems at 40. Athletes are not healthy people. You said before, if I was born healthy, why should I be ill? And in the past minutes, we talked about how to prevent illnesses, how to run a healthy lifestyle, okay? So you said, you, how, you, you mentioned a few steps. Now, I'm adding another layer, which is a little more complicated. My, for, for me, a healthy lifestyle is a tool for people to be healthier, to be more beautiful. Have a person walk for an hour. But if I walk an hour a day, I won't be more beautiful. Wait. After that, put him in a workshop, which will, will show him how to relate well with others. And you'll see how much this person will find his beautiful form in human society. What does that why does that have anything to do with it? Because he'll be looked at. A person is looks good. He's healthy. He radiates the, these good relations. He gets along with everyone. And this is how we will see him as a good person. What is beautiful? What is beautiful? Beautiful is so relative. So he's attractive. He's attractive. We don't get married, for example, with someone who's beautiful. We get married with someone who's comfortable, who's convenient. If I get married with someone because she's beautiful, oh, oh, that's that, it's very bad. What will happen in a year or two? I will need a different woman. I need someone who who's right for me, who's com oh, I'm, it's comfortable for me. Of course, not someone who repulses me physically. We need to make sure that's. What do you mean a person who's attractive? You said if he's healthy, he re he projects good relations, he's a good person, then he's attractive. I am attracted to beauty. No, not simple beauty. Also, each person has a different kind of beauty. Right, if I look, I look at a person, I see he's beautiful or not, and you look at it and you see, see something different according to your taste. But you do feel that you're attracted to a certain form. What does that depend on? It depends on the internal connection that you feel the here we can have an internal connection it's interesting it's attractive for you you enjoy seeing not the external form but the movements the expressions expressions from inside mutual understanding a little concern a little play there are a lot of things it's a whole world but this is what's attractive to you so if I want to be beautiful and attractive, then you need to study it. 
What do I need to study? To study, to learn how to be attractive. And it's not because, hey, look at my muscles, this is attractive. No. It can be even repulsive. Okay, I'll flow with you. So this is not what I need. And this is to go to the gym. So what can I do? How can I train myself from the inside to be attractive? Uh, the result is to be attractive. First of all, you need to know others. You need to know how to how to integrate yourself with him, how to for him to like you, how to be pleasant to him. What kinds of things you need to do inside you, outside you, internally and externally for that for him to like that to such an extent that he'll want to come closer to you, so much that he'll want to communicate with you in a relationship with you and even not to leave you. It needs to be that interesting, that attractive, that pleasant to him that's safe, and so on and so on. So I want to develop these abilities, not towards a specific person. I want to be a beautiful, attractive, healthy person towards everyone in general, not just towards you or her. Always. Very good. We can l learn how to do that. Good. I want to learn that. This is called the uh, Integral Education Course. What will I learn there? You'll learn education. You'll be educated how to be integrally connected to everyone in a nice, good, mutual way. Can each person be attractive? Every person? Yes, but some people aren't. So he, they need to learn how to do that. What does the person need to learn? Come to my course and I'll teach you. No, tell me something now. Even not about the process itself. What makes a person attractive? He needs to know what's good for everyone. First of all, he needs to supply others a comfortable feeling and secure feeling, a feeling of security. Good mood. This is something that always is lacking, something that people always need. If he projects this to others, who is he alike to? Well, a mother. He's like he, he he's similar to one's mother. It can be someone who's two meter two meters tall and in two hundred kilos uh, in weight, but he can feel like a mother to you. And. Each and every one of us has a baby within us who wants this, who is uh, attracted to such an, uh, an approach. He can be a strong hero, a macho person, but he has specifically, these people have a little baby inside them who want and, and demand this warmth and security because wh why else would they build such muscles if not from a, a lack of security? A person who feels secure, why would he need to add these muscles to himself? Each person has a baby inside them, you said? Especially men. Women, you need to emphasize more warmth and understanding with women. Listening is what you need to give them. Both men and women, you need to project to them, without words, what a special person you are. There's nobody else like you. What's so special and interesting about you? You're so attractive. You're not like others. By that, now again, I'm not saying that by that you're going to manipulate them. By that, you will certainly buy people in a good way. And truthfully, yes, in a good way. But this is something we need to learn how to do. Because you need to understand that 
that these are the good relationships we need to have, that we should do them like this. Try it. See it. You can reach a situation, a state, in which they'll just walk after you like children, uh, like the... Uh, like the, the, the little chicks after their mother. Well, children needs this, need this approach from their parents that you just uh, described, how special you are, how worthy and, 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 and good and different. How does this eventually influence their health and, and, and emotional stability? Does it influence them? You need to be careful with this because there needs to be a middle line here and this is why we need you need to learn how to do this, to learn these things. But children need a lack of security. We need to, to not cause them a lack of, of confidence on the one hand. On the other hand, we, we shouldn't cause a kind of over self-love or narcissism. So you now taught me um, on, on one foot how to turn myself into an attractive person. And you said, when you gave this model of a mother, and you said that each person has uh, this baby inside him, and if I treat him like a mother, then I attract him. Also with a friend, what, are, what do we need to add to him? A good mood. In order to treat him like a baby, I need to find this mother figure in me. Is it in every person this image? By wanting to show love to him, you begin to develop inside you an approach of uh, a motherly approach towards him. Can you expand on that a little bit? How does that work and what do I need to do? Because you're integrated by him, with him and feel what would he like? What would make him feel good? And then you're like just like a mother towards his kids. You begin to find the way to help him with that, the, the, the way to talk to him, the words. Sometimes it just seems like a person is, is educated or kind or good, good hearted. There are all kinds of degrees to this good uh, approach between uh, a person and another. Sometimes it's just a gentleman. And, and these degrees become closer and closer and it depends what you need, who you need and, and what kind of closeness you need to reach with that person with these people. Well, just a second, I, I lost you here. I, I kind of, I didn't understand the process. I'll tell you what I understood so far and you'll help me. I want to become an attractive person. I understood that without uh, disrespecting the gyms and the beauty salons and operations and all kinds of industries where I uh, make my exterior look better. You're talking about a whole different level on which I can become an attractive person. The model by which I can become a person that attracts people is if I am able to, if they feel that I relate to them like a mother. Yeah? That I project a, a motherly approach towards them. Yes, but don't exaggerate because they shouldn't see you as as a mother. I'm saying that a person is always happy to get such a, an approach from others. But it's not that he's happy to see it from you. You need to be, uh, to, to use it uh, in, in the right portions, sensitively. I understood. So you're adding limitations for this to be precise. That's clear. But uh, I also you told me, don't worry. Each one, each person can find within him this motherly attitude towards others. Every person. Yes, every person. It's not that some people can't and some people can. Everybody can do this, right? Yes, because we are commanded to reach love thy neighbor as thyself. So each and every one has this ability. There are such uh, preparations predispositions. Yes. Okay, so I understood until here, but now I don't understand what happens next. Maybe you can divide this into steps. So what's the first step? What do I do? I want to start being, doing these things to be, to define these things inside me. For now, I don't have them. I don't, I don't treat others like a mother or not in love thy neighbor as myself. So now you need to teach me something and I want to start. So if you can talk about the steps. 
Sir, you need to come to the series of lectures and workshops. No, oh, but these are big things. No, 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 no. This is not such a thing. I can't just teach you just like this. You need to know what does it mean to be in an integral relationship with others. What is our ego? How do we rise above it? How can we divide ourselves into two forms, my internal self and my external self? A mother, for example, can do this. She's pregnant. And and afterwards, she might may have internal problems, but she shows herself differently to her baby or her child. We need to put you through all kinds of such activities where you'll be able to see how com complex you can be and, and different in the way you relate to each and every person and how you can show a different image to each and every person in accordance to the person and how you can play with them. And this game needs to be, on the one hand, a game. On the other hand, it needs to be heartful. It needs to be loving. But you, who, who treat each and every person differently, you are different. And this game is not a, a dirty game in order to use the person. But we need to learn a lot of things here. It's an entire course. I don't know how much, maybe 20 meetings at least. There's uh, material that we need to go through here in the study and in, in, in the activities with others and examples and, and exercises. And then you're taken uh, to a ball of some sort and you, they, they see what a star you've become. And uh, whether you go, you, you can pass the exam or not. What do you think? It's so simple to pass our course. Let's c come, come to our course and let's see. And afterwards, we put you with all kinds of people in the street, and also people who are uh, royalties. Royalty. Let's see how you behave here and there, and in each and every different place, and on the different levels. You need to know how to behave. You go into a kindergarten. Let's see how the kids stick to you even though you're new and they don't know you. Or let's put you suddenly into a place where there are criminals, let's say. It's not simple. To be attractive, to be one who connects to each and every environment, a person needs to be outside himself to immediately feel the environment and see where he's at. How can I be like them? And even more than they are, to be the magnet in each and every environment. This is a profession. It's a, it's a profession. And then maybe we'll let, have you sell some glass. And then we'll put you in some place where nobody needs any glasses at all. Uh, I don't know what place I can think of one now. And let's see how you 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 can sell it. Let's see you as a salesperson, let's say, because in sales you can see how much people like you, how much they buy it, not because they need it from you. They don't need it, but they want to make you happy. That's how attractive you are. Come get this profession. I'm coming. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly going to be there. What about you, Nitsa? Well, a lot of things came up as you were talking. First of all, I related attractive to the good per feeling a person feels. When he feels good, then he usually looks good. And people like to be around people who, who feel good and look good because this will maybe give a rub off of them. Yes. So also I have this so thought of that everything you said somehow builds a person's uh, strength or stability. And then I remember that all of the preventive medicine, actually its purpose is to build a better uh, uh, immune system because our immune system uh, is, is hurt by all the different things that you said. And that's why we're being vaccinated and even artificially or externally vaccinated. My question is, will this integral education uh, course build a stronger uh, immune system in a person. I don't think it's the immune system. I think it's the return to the natural correct environment. 
Once we used to have this extended family, a tribe. No mother or father, a person, a, a child didn't never got lost. You wouldn't you'd feel that he has around him all the aunts and grandpas and grandmas. He didn't even feel that is this my plate or not my plate? Can I be here or can't I be here? Everything was open. Everybody lived together, and that's it. Brothers, sisters, everybody, are, everybody else is your relative. That's the way he, he, people related, and this is how every, he felt. This is how he needs to feel today, too, even though we're not related biologically. This, if we reach that, a person will feel good, secure, happy, uh, without pressure. This is the state that if we reach it, and this is actually the integral education that we need, this is where it actually aims to. This is not preventive medicine, it's it's complete. It, it cuts off and cuts out all the roots of, of that could cause illnesses. Why would he, would there anything, what would anything happen? Because every physical problem is a malfunction that has to do with some imbalance. So if we balance ourselves, all of us, there won't be any illnesses, there won't be any problems. So what we lack is actually a kind of return to where? To nature? To balance? No, not to nature. We can't go back to nature, but to balance. We have to go back, even in our modern lives, with uh, w whatever we are doing now. It doesn't matter. It depends on us. It's not so hard. Today, uh, specifically today, we have the means for everything. If we were a little wiser to understand our nature better and where we need to constrain our egos, we would reach complete health, general health. Is there anything else we'd like to talk about? The talk is almost up about uh, a healthy lifestyle and preventive medicine. I think only to summarize all that we've heard to hear. So what is the summary, Rav Lightman? If you can summarize, what do you recommend a person who wants to live healthily today and prevent illnesses to the person, to the individual? To the individual. An hour a walk, uh, a walk for an hour a day. have uh, participate in a workshop three times a week. Uh, watch a TV channel where you see laughter workshops. Not sarcastic laughter where I'm laughing at someone else. Healthy laughter, good laughter. With good taste, tasteful. Go through the integral education course. And join the people who want, other than uh, stop to stop smoking, also to stop with all the phenomena today that bring illnesses, noise, cars, pressures, and so on and so forth. What we talked about, we can prevent everything. Everything can be prevented. Okay. I enjoyed our talk very much. So by that, did we complete our talks about health? We need to check. We're not sure. Maybe we'll have another one or two. Maybe. Thank you very, very much, Rav Lightman. Thank you, Nitsa. We learned today how to be attractive people. Let's start working on it. Until next time, all the best and goodbye.